Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video of Fickernot.com, now Fickernot from Studies. So today, we are going to be studying about the amorphous forms of carbon, also known as the non-crystalline forms of carbon. And this is the part 2 video of the carbon and its compounds chapter. So, what is the amorph amorphous form of carbon? Or what are the amorphous forms of carbon? So when they constitute particles, atoms, ions or molecules. So in a shape or in a substance for that matter, molecules can be present under that. It can be ions if it's a radical. There can be atoms. There can be any such thing. Right. So if a constitute particle, be it atoms, ions or molecules of a substance that are arranged in or that are not arranged in a regular geometric pattern regular geometric as in it's not present in a shape that we know if i ask you which shape is this you'll probably say oh ma'am this is a squared if i ask you what shape is this you'll probably say oh okay one two three four five six ma'am it's a hexagon but if i ask you what shape is this what will you say this is no shape and this is somewhat the structure of an amorphous form of carbon it is not a regular geometric pattern and it does not have a particular shape so the substance is called amorphous the amorphous forms of carbon are coal coke charcoal lamp black and gas carbon so let's start off with coal first so coal first thing to know about coal is that it's a fossil fuel it's a fossil fuel it is hard and a black solid it mainly consists of carbon and it also consists of hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur okay so it's a very very hard substance and it's a black solid so again let's recall first thing that it's a fossil fuel second it's hard third it's black fourth it mainly consists of uh, carbon and it also consists of other impurities you can say such as hydrogen oxygen right nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur okay next we won't exactly get into the where it is found because we are not getting into a gk class over here we will only stick to what is there in the chemistry portions but just for your general knowledge you can go through it that it is found in russia usa south africa australia china and germany and in india it is found in jharkhand west bengal Odisha, and madhya pradesh now let's talk about the formation of coal so the formation of coal took millions of years ago about 300 millions of years ago the earth had dense forests so about 300 million years ago the earth had something called dense forests okay so there were just trees all around only trees all around and plants as well so there were all around there were trees and everything so due to natural calamities like earthquakes as you know in earthquakes uh, like when earth earthquakes occur probably forests they're completely destroyed buildings and everything so 300 million years ago of course buildings weren't there but there were forests a lot of forests and there were des dense forests to be very um, specific so due to natural calamities such as earthquakes or volcanic eruptions or you can say volcanoes these forests got buried inside the soil so if this was your earth or the land okay and these are the people walking on this land the forests they were buried over here so they were somewhere buried over here under the soil and due to high temperature and pressure inside the earth and in the absence of air the remains of dead plants slowly converted into coal so the plants under high temperature and pressure turned into coal they turned into coal and the slow chemical process of conversion of remains of dead plants into coal under 
high pressure and temperature is called carbonization so it's a process by which coal is made let's repeat it once again once again so the slow chemical process of the conversion of remains of dead plants into coal under high pressure and temperature is called carbonization so the types of coal are uh, carbonization is a very very slow process and it takes millions of years depending on the extent of carbonization coal is classified into four different types peat lignite bituminous and anthracite so it's almost like we as humans we first are a toddler then we become a child then we become a teenage and then we become an adulthood and then we die it's almost like this so coal also has different stages that it goes through to become a proper carbon or uh, amorphous form of carbon that is the last stage which is the anthracite so we're going to study about all these stages so the first stage that comes along is called peat so peat is a light brown um, substance and it is light brown in color and it is formed uh, in the first stage of carbon sorry of coal and um, it has uh, 50 to 60 percent of carbon content so first thing it is a uh, light brown in color and uh, it's the first stage of coal and it has about 50 to 60 percent of carbon content and rest of them are impurities then comes as a uh, lignite lignite is a brown in color so first they started off with light brown let's compare this to the toddler age of the life cycle of a human then comes the brown which is the lignite let's compare this to the childhood stage of our uh, of uh, mankind right so of this in this stage this is the second stage of coal and it has more than 60 percent of carbon content it is harder and it has a better burning efficiency than peat it definitely has a burning better it has a better burning efficiency just because it is more developed it's almost like if i give you a sum two into two into two at the age of a toddler will you be able to solve it or if i give you give it to you when you were in your childhood you will definitely be able to solve it then right so this is exactly what we're talking about over here lignite it has better and developed properties than that of peat why because it is a more developed form it uh, it over here it's the second stage and it has 60 percent of carbon content now let's move on to the bituminous so bituminous is a black in color let's compare this to the teenager teenage um, face of mankind it is a black in color it is uh, the third stage of the formation of coal the carbon content is about 70 to 90 percent it is the most common type of coal used by the power plants and it is also used as a household fuel so first thing it's black second is the third stage fourth it um, is it has uh, the carbon content of 70% to 90% and it is the most common type of fuel sorry not sorry coal used by the power plants and it is also used as household fuel so someone asks you what is bituminous used for well it is uh, the most common type of coal used by power plants and it is also used as a household fuel it produces both volatile and non-volatile substances on burning it exists in different varieties such as high medium low depending upon the percentage of carbon depending in it so over here it also it can uh, depend because since they're saying 70 to 90 some of the bituminous coal can have 90 some can have 80 some can have 75 some can have 70 percent that is why the coal efficiency that's the bituminous it can depend on the carbon content present in it so it, it can have a high one it can have um, a low variety and it can also have a medium variety okay moving on to the last and final stage which is the anthracite which i compare to adulthood so it is hard dense and black it contains more than 90 percent of carbon that's why it's the most mature of all and it is the purest variety of coal it takes time to catch fire but once it catches fire it burns for a long long time so it is the purest variety of coal just like uh, natural diamonds diamonds are also uh, the natural diamonds are the purest variety of coal and they only and only contain of carbon similarly over here in anthracite as well it is the purest variety of coal because it has the most carbon content also 
okay now let's move on to some uses of coal so earlier coal was used to produce steam to run the steam engine we don't do that anymore because of pollution issues but it was used in uh, steam engines to produce the steam and to run the engine so coal was used to produce steam to run the steam engine second thing that it is used in thermal power plants to produce electricity right uh, in power thermal power plants so coal is used in that particular thermal power plants to produce electricity which also says that it is a good conductor of electricity moving on it is used in many houses in villages as a fuel to cook food in chulas Ch chulas uh, is something when you put on top of a gas you can burn a you can burn or you can cook food on top of it mainly indian flat bread which is also known as chapatis so it is used in many houses in villages to be specific as a fuel to cook food then uh, fourth one it is used in industries to produce organic compounds such as uh, benzene naphthalene and aniline so organic compounds are such as naphthalene if you don't know naphthalene balls are also um, they are used in cleaning deep cleaning of your house so yes it's also used in industries it is used to prepare coke coal gas and coal tar and it is used to manufacture drugs synthetic textiles and perfumes okay so now we're going to have a little learning session i too with you will not check anything and i'm crossing out everything if you have this book in front of you close it and if you don't well say it along with me so we have about six uses of coal and let's see if we can remember all of them let's start with the first one i remember this one right i think you all do too coal was used in the steam to run steam engines first one right second one it was used in thermal power plants to produce electricity okay i think we're going well two out of seven done sorry two out of six so we have four more i think this one was easy too it it is used in chulas right it is used in um, indian villages and many houses as fuel cooked in chulas very good third one it is used in um, industries right what was the thing i give you an example of naphthalene balls right so naphthalene benzene and aniline that's right okay four out of six done two more left come on what can coal be used for apart from this <sighs> we just read this come on okay now tell me fourth one i guess you know this as well it is used to prepare coke coal gas and coal tar and sixth one i think it's the easiest of all or probably the second easiest apart from the thermal power plants or the chulas it is used in manufacturing of dark synthetic textiles and perfumes right well okay very good we got it all right 6 on 6 very good full marks okay now let's talk about the destructive distillation of coal so coal is strongly heated in closed reports in the absence of air to get various useful products this process is called destructive distillation of coal so coal uh, no not not only coal actually if any substance is heated without the absence of air so let's take this as a container let's take this little cloud over here as the air so the air over here is over here is saying please let me in but they don't let them in and then any substance over here it produces many other substances and this is known as the destructive distillation but if we take the substance as a as of coal this will be known as destructive distillation of coal so when coal is strongly heated in the presence sorry in closed reports reports um retorts sorry uh, in the absence of air to get various useful products this process is known as the destructive distillation of coal because the coal is the substance over here okay so let me tell you how this process is done by 
a diagram given over here so what happens is powdered coal okay powdered coal is set on top or set inside a tube and uh, on top of a burner the burner is lit to fire once it's done the boiling tube so the coal it boils up it boils up boils up it goes over here through this tube connected tube right here it makes a vicious liquid or vicious layer which condenses down or descends down to form something called coal tar and the mixture above is the mixture of ammonia and water that is known as ammonium liquor and the excess gas that goes out go goes out is known as the coal gas and the sediment over here or the left out substance over here is known as the powdered coal not powdered coal sorry what is it known as do any of you know well it is known as coke so the left out substance is known as coke the black residue that is left behind is known as coke or is called coke so different products uh, are obtained yes right here so different products are obtained by destructive distillation and they are as follows so first was coke which i think you all remember that was the black residue that was left behind in the boiling tube so coke it is a black and a porous solid substance it is an almost pure form of carbon it contains 98% of carbon so it's an almost pure form but it unfortunately isn't so it's a black and a porous solid substance um, it contains 98% of carbon coke is obtained as a residue during destructive distillation of coal it burns without smoke so if if it is burnt it does set to fire but it does not produce any smoke which is good for our environment as well however it is not commonly used as household fuel because it is expensive since it does not produce any smoke such substances will be expensive because this isn't seen very often in household fuels there there is normally a lot of uh, smoke and everything right when you bake something or when you cook something because it's very expensive to get substances like this so they're saving it for themselves and it's really very expensive that is why you cannot use it as a household fuel now let's go on to the uses of coke so there are two types of coke hard and soft hard coke is light and lustrous and it is used in industrial furnaces so again it is light and it is lustrous okay and it is used in industrial furnaces and soft coke is black and porous and it is used in household furnaces okay so again let's do a little question and answer session right here no one will look at your textbook and neither will i i am cancelling all of this out once again first thing how does coke look i think this is easy right it's a black and porous solid it almost consists uh, it almost is a pure substance of carbon it consists of 98% of carbon that's right um then what was the third thing ha huh. how is coke obtained it is obtained by the destructive distillation of coal it is left behind as the residue in the boiling tube it burns without smoke that's right and it is not used in household fuel because it is very expensive hmm now uses of coke what did we learn about the uses of coke that there are two types of coke right one is the hard coke and one is the soft coke hard coke is light and lustrous whereas the soft coke is black and porous hard coke is uh, used in industrial furnaces and soft coke is used in household furnaces very good we again nailed it i hope you did too <laughs> anyway let's go on to the four uses of coke so coke is an essential raw material for the iron and steel industry it is required to heat the furnace so it is an essential raw material as in it is a very very good raw material uh, for uh, the 
iron and steel both uh, industry and it is required to heat the furnace okay then next it is also used as a reducing agent for the ext extraction of many metals from their ores so a lot of metals that are um, in their ores like almost like when you crush a walnut to get the inside part and eat it up right so again in this it is used to ex extract uh, metals from their ores and it is used to prepare metallic carbides such as calcium carbide so for the first use some of you must be very confused let me tell you a furnace is an enclosed structure in which material can be heated to a very very high temperature so it is also probably a good conductor of heat that is why it is used to heat a furnace which heats other uh, substances also right so again let me read this out it is an essential raw material for the iron and steel industry and it is used to heat the furnace let's go on to the fourth and last use that it is used in the manufacturing of artificial graphite water gas co plus h2 and producer gas co plus n2 so the manufacturing of artificial graphite i think we learned this in part one graphite was a crystalline form of carbon but to manufacture artificial graphite coal is used and to be specific coke is used and uh, water gas like co plus h2 and producer gas is co plus n2 perfect so let's say the four one uh, let's say again uh, let's do our drill let's recall whatever we read okay let's do this first one what was it it is an essential raw material for the iron and steel industry right and it is used to heat the furnace perfect one down three to go second one huh what can be the second one i wonder what did we learn about coke do you know any property or any example which i gave huh i remember the walnut example that means it is used to ex extract the metal from its ore then hmm, this one i think everyone remembers it is used in metallic carbides right that is calcium carbide and i think the fourth one i'm sorry i forgot to take it out but i think it's front of you it is used in the manufacturing of artificial graphite the water gas was co plus h2 and the producer gas is co plus n2 very good now let's move on to coal tar so coal tar is a black and thick liquid it has a very unpleasant smell it almost has the smell of when your sister brother or your parents use the washroom and give it right after you <laughs> no jokes apart but yes it does have a really very unpleasant smell and it is a black and thick liquid it is a mixture of different carbon compounds so this is the coal tar that uh, it's uh, the black and vicious liquid right that was that was as a sediment in the second test tube which was given yes that was coal tar so it's a black and thick liquid so many chemical substances are obtained by the fractional distillation of coal tar so coal when it goes under destructive distillation it gets coal tar right and many other substances but coal tar also further goes through the fractional distillation and it many chemical substances are obtained and the chemical substance substances obtained by the fractional distillation of coal are used for the manufacturing of dyes explosives paints varnishes plastics synthetic fibers and drugs okay so all of this now let's move on to coal gas so coal gas burns to produce heat thus it is an excellent fuel it is used as fuel in industries situated near the coal producing plants so i think this is easy and ammonium liquor it is used in to prepare fertilizers that with that we come to an end of coal i hope you all understood what coal is all about and what happens in the process of the destructive distillation of coal and how we get coke coal tar ammonium liquor and coal gas let's do a quick little drill right okay let's start this drill so coal tar what was it it's a black and thick liquid and it has an unpleasant 
smell that's right and uh, many other chemical substances um, are obtained by the fractional distillation of coal tar to produce dyes synthetic fibers uh, explosives paints drugs plastics and varnishes right then coal gas uh, it burns to produce heat and it is an excellent fuel it is used as fuel in industries situated near the coal producing plants oh wait i forgot to cancel out a lot of things let me cancel out this and now let's do this okay let's do coal gas again i think coal tar is fixed let's do coal gas again so coal gas is is used to produce heat it is it is an excellent fuel it is used as a fuel in um, the industries right okay so now let's move on to the ammonium liquor so i think this is easy it is used to produce uh, or sorry to prepare fertilizers okay but i think i we missed something uh, ha huh. we missed this thing oh no okay we missed coal gas over here coal gas we missed the line saying that it is used as a fuel in industry situated near the coal producing plants okay it's fine i am sure you guys will surely remember it if i didn't but i remember it now <laughs> so yes that's it for me to you today stay tuned for the charcoal and the carbon dioxide part 3 and 4 which is coming up for you all to complete this chapter thank you and i'll see you next week bye